Welcome to Practical Python for IoT. My name is Gary and I will be taking you through each chapter and demonstrating the code examples found throughout the book. This video is for chapter number one. The first task we have in this chapter from a practical point of view is to check the Python versions that are on our Raspberry Pi. So the first one is to check Python take version and we see we have Python version 2.7.16 however now if we type Python with a 3 we will see that we get Python version 3.7.3 uh, illustrating that there are two versions of Python on the operating system by default now the examples I'm running here are on Raspberry and OS Buster if you're using a different version uh, of Raspberry and you may get a different version, but you should be still getting a version 2 point something and a version 3 point something. For the exercises in this book, as long as you have a version 3.5 or above, the, uh, the code examples will work. Our next task is to clone the code for the entire book. You can get the, uh, the command out of the book in chapter one, or which I'm doing here is I've gone to the uh, GitHub site for this uh, book, and I'm just going to grab the URL from there. And clone just into the default home directory on my Raspberry Pi. Though to keep the uh, examples shorter in the book, I'm actually going to clone it into a directory called PYIO.com. T. And I just do that by putting that after the URL in the clone command. Okay, now that has cloned, we will just change into that directory. And we have a uh, folder there for every chapter. Right, and next we we are learning about uh, virtual environments, so we are going to create our first virtual environment. But we're doing this in chapter one, so we first change into chapter one, because we will create a virtual environment for every chapter. Right, so our command is Python with a three, very important. We want to create a virtual environment for Python three. The take M, which M stands for module, so we want to run the built-in module called V, E, and V, and we want to create a virtual environment, and just for convenient, we're just going to simply call it V, E, and V. After a few moments, this will be created. And if we look at our folder now, we will see, here's our original folders here. We will see that we, oh, sorry, beg my pardon. We will, here's our original folders here for chapter one. However, now we actually have a V, E, and V folder added, which contains our virtual environment. Now we need to activate a virtual environment to use it, and we do that by typing in source and running the activate command found in the bin directory. Oops, activate. And we will have V and V printed here at the start of our prompt to tell us we're in a virtual environment. And that word V, E, and V comes from this E, V, E, and V we typed here. So if you type something different there, you get a different name here. Now that we're in the Python virtual environment, if we would just type Python without the three, oops, oops, we actually see that this is now Python version number three, 3.7.3. 3. And if we were to use the which command, we see that it is the Python interpreter that is within our virtual environment directory for chapter one.
to leave our virtual environment, we simply type deactivate. And you'll notice the V, E and Vs disappeared. And if we were to type which Python again, we'll see we're back to the default Python on our Raspberry Pi. Or if I do the, put the version in front of it, it'll be a version 2. So by going to the virtual environment, we've defaulted our Python version to whatever version we created that virtual environment with. Righto, let's uh, get into some code. So we'll need to activate our virtual environment again. Just remembering every chapter we do everything within the virtual environment for that chapter. Activated the virtual environment. Now the first task we always should do is to upgrade pip, the package manager for Python. So it's pip install pip with an upgrade. After a uh, few moments, that has now installed. And we can type in, just following through the chapter, we can type in pip list to see what is installed by default in our virtual environment. Next, our next task in the chapter is to run our GPIO check program. And we will see that both GPI0 and Pi GPI0 are both unavailable. These are two uh, GPI libraries we'll be using throughout the book, so we will uh, install them now. Again, this will be just for chapter one. We will reinstall them as a uh, first task in every chapter uh, through a requirements file, which we'll cover shortly. So to install a package with pip, we just it's pip install and the name of the packages. And we can do two at the same time or more. After a few moments, they will be installed. Great. Now if we pip list, we will see that besides our uh, defaults, we now have pi gpi0 and pi gpio installed as well as color zero, which is a uh, dependency of GPIO zero. Now, if we run our Python, uh, sorry, run our check GPIO, GPIO package check, we will see that both of these are now available to Python in our virtual environment. Now, if we install packages, we might want to uh, take a copy of them for reinstalling later, and we can do that by freezing them. And the command we do for this, uh, just by general convention, is, is a pip freeze, but we pass it into a file called requirements. It's about right. Third time lucky. requirements.txt is just the uh, convention that we commonly use and if we have a look in that file we will just we will see the defaults are not here but we've got our packages there and it actually locks them down to a particular version so that if you were to use this file on a different computer for example it uh, would install the versions you wrote you wrote your code against The next task in chapter one is to look at running Python scripts outside of the virtual environment and to run a script on boot. 
So if you're building a project and you want it to obviously run when you start your Raspberry Pi up, this is something you you want to be able to do. So to run a Python script outside of its virtual environment, but to run it within the context of its virtual environment, we need to use the fully qualified path to the Python interpreter for the virtual environment. It's a bit of a mouthful, but let's work work our way through this. So I'm in chapter one's virtual environment. And if I was to type which Python, which we did before, this is the fully qualified path name to our Python interpreter. I'm just going to copy that. Now I will exit or deactivate our virtual environment. So no virtual environment now because no V and V at the front here. But if I was to paste that entire command, Python command in there, I can now run a script in the context of that virtual environment, even though I'm out. And if we needed to run a Python script as a uh, as a root user, which you may need to do sometimes with say with the sudo, then it's exactly just what we did and we just we sudo in front of it. Okay, next we look at how to reboot. Our, sorry, run a script when we reboot our Raspberry Pi. So we have a script here called run on boot, which we're going to uh, use our cron tab to actually start that when we reboot. So first of all, we just want to make sure that it is executable. So we do that by the using the ch mod, change mod, u for user, x for execute. So we're saying the user is allowed to execute this script and we'll just pass run on boot. Okay, next we need to edit our cron tab. And you'll need to add a line. I've already added this line here because I was testing this, but you'll need to add this line into your cron tab. The at reboot fully qualified path name to our run at boot script. Just to be clear on that, not the Python script, it's the run at boot script, which will then run our Python script. So if we just look at that file, oops, sorry, I'll get the right file, my mistake. This will run our script and it will use the Python interpreter that is our fully qualified Python interpreter. Now in the chapter we show the fact that it's run on boot by logging to a simple file. So I'll just start by, I've already got my log file here, so I'll just remove it. Okay, so our task was to run the run on boot script at the command prompt, and then we get our log file. And we see we have one entry in, in that file. So next, next I need to reboot my Raspberry Pi here to capture the fact that it uh, is getting run at boot. So I'll do that and I'll kind of lose uh, my screen here, but I will be back shortly. Okay, I'm back after having restarted my Raspberry Pi. So I'll just open a terminal and we'll go into the chapter one folder. CD. And we'll just have a look what's in the GPIO check.log file. And what we want to see is two entries. The first entry that was put in when we run run on boot on the terminal. And secondly, a second entry which uh, confirms that our run on boot.sh script run when our Raspberry Pi was rebooted. 
Okay, our next task in the chapter is to just check or enable some interfaces on your Raspberry Pi. So what we'll get you to do is go to your Raspberry Pi menu. Now mine's on the bottom, but I think by default yours may be on the top if you haven't changed it. Then preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration. Go to the interfaces tab and for convenience, just enable each one of these. That'll ensure that the services uh, that we do need for the remainder of the book are, are running and just OK that. And finally, back into a terminal, we need to enable the Pi GPIO daemon. We uh, will be using uh, the Pi GPIO library throughout the book. So it is a two part uh, two part library which we cover in a later chapter. I think it's chapter five that we cover it, uh, but we'll enable it uh, now as part of this chapter while we're setting up our environment. So we need to go sudo systemctl enable, that's pi gpio with a d at the end. And so that's enabled our service. And secondly, we'll start our service. We'll just make sure it starts. Oops, sorry, that should be start. Pi G P I O D. Okay, all good. Now, I would just get you now to reboot your Raspberry Pi. We've enabled some services and we've just enabled and started the Pi G P I O D, but to just be sure uh, that nothing needs a reboot to enable, because they have in other versions of Raspberry, and I believe, I'll just get you to do a sudo reboot, restart your Raspberry Pi, and I'll see you in chapter two.